G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a pretty heavily requested topic um, that I've had requested quite a few times by people in the past, which is what is my hardware and my software setup that I use? Because um, I do BIM, I do recording, um, so obviously I need a lot of software and hardware to support these processes. Um, so let's just jump to the, to the actual presentation so I can work through it. So my setup. So a lot of you have requested this. Um, I assume it might be driven by the fact that a lot of you are now working from home. Um, so maybe you've had to focus more on the type of hardware and software that you personally use. And maybe you're realizing maybe your laptops aren't up to spec and you can't run some of your programs. So I'm gonna tell you what I use, which actually works really well for me, um, and give you some ideas about maybe what you can look for when you look for specifications. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about initially my recording hardware, um, the software that I use to record, and then I'm gonna focus on my actual hardware that I use for just my general work and then also the AEC software that I use and how I license it. So, um, oops, just changed my camera. <laughs> okay, so, so what I focus on in when I select my hardware and my software is I want it to be easy to use and easy to set up. I'm not really a tech wizard. Um, I'm not obsessed with technology. I like using software and I like those processes, but it doesn't mean that I necessarily spend hours upon hours doing research upon what sort of things I should be buying. I try not to upgrade too frequently because um, this costs a lot of money um, and when you have to sell gear that spends a lot of time and you lose a lot of money in the process. So I look for value for money and I also look for value for time in the quality of life of what I buy. I want it to last at least four years as a device. Otherwise, I don't think it's really value for money as a piece of hardware. So the first thing I use is my recording microphone. Um, so I can probably actually just either grab it or maybe move my camera. Um, so just off screen, there's this thing. Uh, this is the the Rode NT-USB microphone. Um, so it's never changed. This is the microphone I've used since the channel began and it's been super reliable and the audio quality is great. Like at the moment, I'm sort of sitting, you know, at a pretty good distance to it. I'm not too close to it and it's, it's filtering out a lot of the sound, which is really important if you do presentations and you want to talk naturally. Because obviously if I'm over here next to my microphone talking, it's really awkward. Um, so this way at least you can you can actually get the microphone. I might just get a better shot of me and the mic. So you can see here, that's the microphone. It's very simple. It's got a filter on it. It's got a little stand. Um, and it's just connected via a, I think a, a USB-C, I think that is, um, to, my, to my main monitor. So it's a very convenient setup. Um, and I find it a great, a great little microphone um, that gets the job done. Um, just jump back. So, but I know a lot of people actually use this. Um, the Blue Yeti X uh, or USB microphone is probably one of the most popular uh, microphones I've seen amongst all the other people that I know that do YouTube um, at a more casual level like me. Um, for recording, um, obviously I can't show you my camera because my camera is looking at me, um, but this is what it looks like. It sits atop my computer. Um, it's just a Logitech HD webcam. I think it's called the C615. Um, I decided that the webcam wasn't super important to my channel. I mean, if I go to my webcam now, you can see that the quality, it's not great. Like, I mean, it's it's got blur focal issues sometimes, depending how close I am to the camera. Um, obviously the quality isn't great. Um, the motion's fine. Like you can get the range of motion, pretty much the frames per second is fine. It's just the overall quality's um, not that great. But I decided that obviously I'm not really focusing on me. I'm focusing on my tutorials. So this was okay. Um, there's a lot of pricing tiers for cameras. And at a certain point, a webcam may not be the best choice. Some people use this one here. This is really popular for streaming. Um, it's probably the one that I'm gonna buy eventually. I think it's about $300 Australian. Um, and I've been told this is probably a good setup unless you wanna go really extreme and then get like a DSLR or a camcorder and just get a proper video camera, which can be anywhere between 3000 plus depending on the lenses that you use. So, um, I guess my, my first setup for recording um, was extremely primitive. The software I used, I wouldn't recommend using it now based on my experience because I was just getting started. Um, but it's very possible to have a 100% free recording setup if you do it right for the software. 
So what I used to use is a program called Flashback Express, which is a free video screen recorder. This is actually it here, because I only stopped using it quite recently. And you can just configure your audio devices and you can, you can record multiple screens or regions or windows. So it's a really good free recorder. Um, it does have some settings that you can pre-configure, like it can count you in to recording a video. Um, and I can also go and record my webcam. I don't know if this will work with OBS, which is my current recorder, probably not. Um, but at the moment I've got another recorder open that I'll talk about. Um, so I'm just gonna close this. And I used to actually use Windows Movie Maker <laughs> to put my videos together, um, which is just a very, a very weak um, solution compared to some of the alternatives that I've come across since. So what I use now is Open Broadcaster or OBS. So off on my laptop at the moment, I actually have this, um, which is OBS. And now you can see we're entering the wormhole. Um, the great thing about OBS that I found is you can set up all these different profiles of how you can record. So I can change to this one here, which I call the Aussie Bim Guru Big, which is just me. And I can see that I've got different sources that I'm capturing. You can see I'm partially fitting my window in here. I've got me, I've got my banner, um, and then you know I've got my other profile. And this is just an image. So it's really easy to lay out your recording space without thinking about it. The only thing that I have to consider is I have a little piece of black on my background so that I can see the zone of my recording space that is inactive. Because I do have a really small little space here to the left that's blocked on my screen because I'm recording in 1920 uh, by 1080 res resolution. Um, I used to actually use paint <laughs> to do my banner and then I used to cover the top of it with my webcam. So it was very, very primitive um, in terms of how it was set up. And now instead I just integrate it into the recording itself. Um, so pretty funny sort of walk down memory lane there for me. <laughs> um, and then I also use Adobe Premiere CC or Creative Cloud. Um, this is what I use to put all my videos together. It's a very convenient program. Um, it essentially just lets me stitch my introduction, have some basic fade effects, and I can just put my video in the middle. Um, I don't do a lot of editing to my videos. I try to do it usually in one take if I can. Um, if I need to split take it, I'll, I'll do that. Um, and yeah, I can just essentially work here. Now the great thing about OBS is that you can instantly convert it to an MP4. Um, there's almost no processing time. It's processing on the fly which is my favorite feature about it. Flashback Express used to have to post-process the video, which could take anywhere between 10 minutes to an hour. Um, OBS does it instantaneously, so highly recommend that. Um, there's, there are some alternatives. I know that Camtasia is quite popular. Um, I don't think that's Camtasia, I think that's Flashback Express, um, but I do know some people use Camtasia. And as well as that, um, you can actually, there's some free versions of Adobe Premiere CC. There's some alternatives such as HitFilm, or DaVinci, which usually have pro versions, but they still have some light free versions. I've been told DaVinci is actually really good. Um, I might try it out myself. Because seriously, I'm considering moving on from the Adobe Creative Cloud suite um, for some free or cheaper alternative programs. Um, whilst there are programs in the Adobe suite that I've come to be really good at using, such as Photoshop, they're quite expensive um, to, to have the Adobe Creative Cloud cost about 77 Australian dollars a month if you subscribe on the annual plan. So it's quite expensive. Um, and I think if you go month by month, it's about $117 a month. Um, so it's not really affordable. Um, so I am considering looking at some of these free alternatives at the moment. Um, but at the moment, there, it is hard to replace Photoshop and it is hard to replace Acrobat um, in terms of the, the level of what those programs can do. But there are alternatives out there. Um, so I'll see what I can do. But so now we're moving on to hardware. So this is probably more exciting. Um, a lot of you probably are more curious about my laptop, which I'll, I'll get to soon. That's probably the most important part. Um, I'm gonna start with my monitor. So my monitor is great, I love it. Um, it was sort of like an impulse buy um, because it's a bit of a luxury item. Uh, but essentially I'm working in this case off a, I'm working off a, an Acer X, XZ350CU, which essentially is a 35 inch screen. So it's massive. Um, so essentially, I work like, like this. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, there we go. So you can see this is my screen, so it's pretty big. Um, you notice that I'm actually blocking off the edges of the screen. So from about there, my screen finishes. Because at the moment I'm recording in 1920 uh, by 1080p. So at the moment, uh, my screen finishes at that edge, but it can go you know, pretty big. I mean, I, I can't actually change the resolution right now because I record in 1920 by 1080 for YouTube. Um, but, you know, obviously when I work, I can expand that screen right up and it's almost like having two screens in one. And then next to that, I have my laptop. So I sort of have the, the wide screen and then I have, then I have like my laptop next to it. 
So it's a pretty good setup. Um, it's a lot of screen real estate. I'm not a fan of using too many screens at once because I don't like that phenomenon, phenomenon where your mouse jumps to the next screen and you sort of lose that connectivity, especially if you're trying to work in a, prog a program that has a lot of UIs that you'd rather have on one screen, such as Revit. Um, it's great to use a 35 inch monitor with Revit if you can find the space for it. <laughs> That's probably the drawback to the screen. It's quite big. Um, anyway, what's next? So the next thing is my mouse. Uh, my mouse is quite simple. Um, I'm using in this case a Ventus TT Esports mouse. Um, I love using gaming mice. I swear by them for anything really. Like gaming mice are just superior to any other type of mouse. Um, the precision that you get out of them and the speed, so that's my mouse. I mean, it looks pretty cool obviously, but really the, the main thing I like about it is that it's precise. So you can change the speed of the mouse when you're, when you're panning. There's a little button on it that essentially changes the speed. Uh, that one there, so you can speed up, speed down on the fly. Um, it also has some macro buttons on it. In this case, it has two, um, which isn't many for a gaming mouse, to be honest. Um, but in this case, I have one for copy and one for paste, because um, I'm doing these commands all the time. So it's really nice to not have to control C, control V, control C, control V. Very handy, saves me a lot of time. In the future, I'm probably going to purchase the Razer Basilisk. Um, I have used this mouse before. Um, when I borrowed it from a friend and it was a very nice mouse to use. It was also very comfortable to hold um, and that's really important for me with a mouse. Um, it does have to be one where you're not going to just give yourself a carpal tunnel in one year's time. It's really important to focus on posturepedic um, when it comes to mice. So this one actually supports 11 different macro buttons as well. So it's going to really increase my productivity. Um, so I think that's a really important purchase. Currently for keyboard, um, I just use the, the Razer Ornata Chroma. Um, essentially, the main reason I got this is because of comfort. Um, firstly, it has a wrist pad. So if I just switch to camera, you can see that's my, that's my keyboard. Um, so it, it lights up too, which is pretty cool. And it has different lighting modes. So if you do, you find, well, I'll just try to turn this around. Oh, there we go. So you can see there, it changes colors at the moment just because I like that mode. Um, but when I do work in, in low light, I do tend to switch it to a, to a green light. Apparently that's better for your circadian rhythm. Um, so it's got some little features for that. Um, the main thing I like about it is it has a detachable wrist pad. So essentially it means that you're not leaning on a hard desk all the time, which is better for your wrists. Um, and it gives you a better posture while you're typing as well. So I think it's really important to look for those things when you get a, get a keyboard. So let's move on to the big one, the laptop. This is probably all, all you really care about, right? <laughs> so there's probably three things I really look for in a laptop that I think anyone should look for no matter what they do with a laptop. The first one is portability. How portable do you need this thing to be? How heavy should it be? What's its battery life that you can allow for? Do you even need battery life? Are you just going to be plugged in all the time? I'm plugged in all the time on my laptop, so battery life wasn't important to me. How durable do you need this thing to be? Can it be thin? Can it be fragile? Or do you need, need it to be able to take just a little bit of a hit sometimes? Are you going to go out and sight with this thing? And maybe you're better off getting a tablet. Maybe you don't want to get something too expensive. Maybe you might remote desktop to a workstation using a really bad laptop that just has a good internet connection. Lots of consider considerations. And finally, performance. What are you actually using your laptop for? You don't need to get a gaming laptop if all you're doing is using Microsoft Word. So keep in mind that sometimes performance isn't always necessary. It just comes down to your cost or your price point. Um, as well as that, you know, what are you doing with the laptop? That's really important. I just realized I'm not on my presentation. <laughs> so you need to consider BIM and CAD for vector graphics, because that can really heavily impact the graphics card that you pick. Some graphics cards cannot handle vector style graphics, which BIM and CAD rely on. So be really careful when you pick graphics cards that aren't supported by a vendor, because you do need to make sure that they are built to handle these types of graphics. It's not always about having a powerful graphics card. Sometimes it's about the type of graphics that they process. As well as that, you may need VR and AR compatibility. Now keep in mind, it's quite hard to find a cheap graphics card that can do BIM and CAD and VR and AR and high-end gaming. Usually it can do one or the other, unless it's expensive. In my case, mine's expensive. About a third of the cost of my laptop is the graphics card. Um, as well as that, just check out your warranty period and how much support the person that makes the laptop does. Some laptops are quite cheap, but it's because they're made by pretty bad vendors that don't really give you a lot of support once you purchase the laptop, and maybe they only have a year of warranty. So just be really careful with that. But what do I use? Okay, moment of truth. This is my laptop. It's the MSI WT758SM. Um, it's probably the most important purchase I've made for my business, for myself, just for me in general. I use this thing all the time. It's performance and longevity and support 
for all motivators and me purchasing it. I did a quite a lot of research to find this laptop. I'll be honest, it's pretty expensive. Um, like if you want to look it up and look at the price, you'll see what I mean. But it's a tax write-off. I'm putting it towards my business because I use this thing probably 80% of the time for business. So I can I can write a lot of this off on my tax deductible uh, capital overhead. So it's probably not going to cost me as much as it would have if I just bought it for fun. Um, so there was some motivation behind that as well. Uh, whoops. So the specs of this thing um, are here. If you're interested, probably the most important thing to note is it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and its processor is quite strong. These two things are very important to how it performs. Of course as well, the fact that I'm using a Quadro P5200 graphics card is also quite important. It's a very strong graphics card for BIM and CAD applications, but it's still strong enough to support things like VR, AR and gaming as well. It's a very high-end graphics card and it's probably about a third of the cost of the laptop overall. So I always recommend for laptops that it's at least 16 gigabytes of RAM 8 gigabytes usually won't cut it these days, especially if you want to play any video games on your computer as well. Um, 8 gigs pretty hard to run most things these days. It can do it, but you'll be you'll be spinning here and there. It won't be happy. You will slow down quite a lot. Um, processor, it, it really varies depending what you're doing, um, but anything from the Xeon i-series or the AMD ranges are usually pretty safe bets. Um, you can use single, um, but I do recommend multi-core if you can, in terms of how the processors are, are set up and then threaded. Um, the graphics, it, it, it's a bit of a hot debate, about what type, type of graphics card you should use. Um, there is some people that swear that you have to get a Quadro graphics card. I'm not one of them. Um, I do believe there are other options and a popular one that people talk about is the GTX range um, in the GeForce range. So the 1080 Ti Plus or Ti and beyond. Um, I think there's a 2080 now. Um, apparently these can run Revit just fine and they're actually more suited to um, gaming as well. So some people do swear that you can use these. I haven't tried them personally because I don't want to risk it because um, I don't want to go buy one and find out it doesn't work and then Autodesk won't give me a refund for Revit because they don't certify it because Autodesk does have an approved or certified list of graphics cards but a lot of people do suspect that the reason they've done this is because they have corporate deals with the people that make those graphics cards as well so just keep that in mind as well and I guess I haven't really shown my laptop but um, that's it just sitting right there I pretty much keep it covered all the time but um, I guess that's it with the, with the cover off, so it's a pretty nice laptop. Um, no real complaints for it so far, it's very strong, runs very fast, um, it has a lot of ports in it as well, so it has a Thunderbolt port around the back, which is pretty much great. If I ever want to boost my external GPU, um, I can plug that in through the Thunderbolt 3 port, and as well as that, um, I can also, uh, I think, what was I, what was I going to say, there was something else I could do with it that could expand it, I think it's a 32 gigabyte RAM laptop, but it's got a feature that I think is called SLI, um, which means that you can upgrade it to 64 gigabytes of RAM later on by replacing um, the, the 2x16 RAM cards with 2x32 instead. So that was a pretty big motivator to me purchasing as well. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything um, for hardware. So finally, I'll just finish up with software. And software is a little bit more obvious. Um, for CAD and BIM, I use the AEC collection. So I run on a single user license because um, I just work with myself. Um, but it pretty much provides me access to all these programs, most importantly, and I run between versions 18 to 21. It's important to note if you do use an AAC collection, you have to stick within four years um, of the versions that you use. So I couldn't go and support Revit 2013 up to 2021. I have to pick four years. So when I moved up to Revit 2021, I had to phase out all my 17 versions. Um, I still use Rhino 3D as well, and Grasshopper and Rhino Inside. Um, typically more so for 3D modeling, and I run on a perpetual license. So Rhino actually doesn't work on a subscription basis. You just buy it outright, and then you upgrade when you want to, which is really nice, um, and it's quite cheap as well. I think it's about $1,000 US for a, a Rhino 6 license on its own. Um, I do use Adobe CC uh, for all these programs, but like I said, I am considering some free alternatives um, because it is quite expensive to maintain that subscription. Um, I do miss having those standalone versions um, that aren't supported anymore. But I guess my parting tips for software and hardware are that you should always spend within your means, um, but don't skimp out on quality. So don't just try to save money by getting inferior quality products that won't do what you need, because at the end of the day, time is money. Uh, a lot of my purchases were based on the fact that I knew I would save time in the long run and inevitably make money and just give myself time back. Um, always keep repetitive strain, injury and comfort at the forefront of your mind, especially with mice and with keyboards and also just with laptop keyboards as well. Make sure that you're always using good posture when you type and when you use your mouse 
Otherwise, you might end up putting yourself out of action in your 60s when you might still need to work. Um, so be really careful of that. As well as that, do careful research. Um, don't just jump at the first option you find just because it's cheap. Um, maybe it's cheap for a reason. That's probably the biggest issue I find that people bring to me. They say, hey, check out this laptop. It's great. It's only like $1,000. And I go, mm, go look at the graphics. It's pretty bad. And they say, well, everything else looks fine. I say, yeah, sure, but you need graphics too. So be really careful that you, you meet all those criteria that you need. And just remember that everyone's needs are different. So don't just copy someone else's spec and assume it's going to work for you. Uh, make sure that what you pick suits the needs that you have. And keep in mind, if you're a small business, um, you can write off things to some degree, but you can't go and write off the entire asset. Like I can't put my entire laptop on my taxes write off. I can only put the portion of the laptop I use for work. So at the moment, I say I probably use about 80% uh, for work and then 20% for leisure. So I can only claim that 80% as far as I'm aware. And there is sort of depreciation based rates as well. You can't just claim the entire thing in the first six months that you buy it because that thing has an estimated life. So you do have to depreciate it gradually. You can't just write the entire thing off straight away, as far as I understand at least. So just keep those things in mind. Um, this, this presentation will be on GitHub if it helps anyone, uh, but hopefully that helps answer some questions that people have given me about my hardware setup. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, I usually make videos usually two times a week and aim to do so for a while. And if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Feel free to leave any questions or comments about my setup um, down below. I'm more than happy to answer them. But remember, I'm not a tech wizard, so I can't necessarily tell you what software or hardware you definitely need to use. Um, but I can try. And there's a lot of resources out there too, so definitely check those out. Um, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.